84% of newly built single family homes in the year of 2022 belong to an HOA or a homeowners association. And 57% of people living in HOAs dislike living in the HOA. There's been a huge backlash to the HOAs because of so many homeowners' negative experiences. Frustrated Georgia homeowner slapped with parking fines by his HOA. Here's the problem though, he doesn't even own a car. So let's take a look at what HOAs have done to our neighborhoods, how they're out of control, and what we can do to take the power back. So what are HOAs? HOAs are homeowners associations that are started by the developer or the builder in a neighborhood to protect property values. The HOAs are completely run by the builders and the developing company. Typically, the home builder runs the HOA in the neighborhood until which time they are done with the neighborhood and then they hand over the reins to a homeowners association, which is run by a group of volunteers from the neighborhood, people who own homes, they become the homeowners association. They get a board and they get a president. Now what the homeowners association does is they have the right to maintain the neighborhood. They will maintain the swimming pools. They maintain the roads. If there's a clubhouse, they may maintain the grass in the common areas. That is one of their jobs, but their bigger job is to maintain the neighborhood through what we call the C, C, and R's, the covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Now these covenants, conditions, and restrictions, the C, C, and R's, these are the rules of the neighborhood. Anybody who buys a house in that particular neighborhood goes ahead and signs that they're going to abide by these C, C, and R's, these covenants and restrictions. Most people do not read them. It is so important for you to read these covenants and restrictions because once you sign them, you're signing away all your rights. It becomes very difficult to overturn anything that's written in these covenants and restrictions. You're saying that you're gonna abide to everything that the HOA says. Therein lies the problem. Now the HOA typically doesn't wanna run the neighborhood. They hire a management company, an outside consultant to run the neighborhood, homeowners pay dues every month to the homeowners association, which goes to the management company. Management companies are a business. They get a flat fee and they also get the fines that are handed out by the HOAs. Now these management companies may run 40 or 50 different neighborhoods, but they have kind of things down to a science. So it benefits the HOA to have one of these management companies. They are outside advisors. They are for profit and it's a $38 billion industry. They get the monthly fees and the monthly fines. And in conjunction with the HOA, they run the neighborhood. And if you don't listen to them, you are in trouble. The moment you purchased your home, you joined our wonderful homeowners association, whether you wanted to or not. The HOA is here to take care of you. You give us money, and in return, we maintain all the beauty you see around us. And if you don't pay up, we'll turn your fucking life upside down. Now the HOA has the power to make sure that you're following the rules, and if you don't, they're gonna hand out fines. And there are so many rules and regulations that you can get fined for, That'll make your head spin. Can't have those. Then they wanted her to power wash her house and sweep up her driveway. But when she didn't get it done fast enough, she got late fees on top of late fees. $25 a day for each infraction. These are things that are so incidental, they're not important. They're asinine. And you're charging me $17,000? If your grass is too high, if the color of the outside of your home is not the color that they approve, if your shutters are the wrong color, whether or not your landscaping is to their liking if you don't have enough of these type of bushes or those type of bushes each of our lawns requires somewhere on the property one tree six three gallon shrubs one bird bath a garden gnome a second gnome for that one to talk to it is crazy what they can find you for everything has to go through the hoa if you want to put a planter in front of your house 
You've got to get HOA approval. If you do it without it, you're getting fined. And if you don't pay the fines, they will foreclose on your house. There was a process server who came and knocked on my door and served me with a foreclosure notice. And of course, you know, I freaked out. Maisha had fallen behind on a lot of her bills, but she said she'd work something out with the mortgage company. But this was the HOA, and I had no idea that an HOA could foreclose on you. Not a joke. They will put a lien on your home, and they can foreclose and take away your home. While the HOA may call in a management company, the HOA is ultimately responsible for maintaining the neighborhood. And if you think it's only the HOA board that's watching over you, there are people in your neighborhood, your friends, your neighbors, the guy across the street, they have nothing to do with their lives. So they drive around and they look for potential violations to report you to the HOA board. The HOA continues to harass us over and over again. Why? For what? Our car just broke, we're trying to fix it, and now she's harassing us like she always does. Oh, okay. okay. So you well, need to move your vehicle. It is insane. Now, while the HOAs apparently are there to maintain property values, do they actually maintain property values? It's controversial, it depends on the neighborhood, but there was a study from a Yale professor that showed that in actuality, home values maintain higher values in non-HOA neighborhoods versus HOA neighborhoods. And oftentimes, homes that are listed in the MLS will specifically state, this is a non-HOA home, non-HOA neighborhood. For some people, for many people, it's a positive not to be in an HOA neighborhood. They don't have to pay the fees and the dues and they don't have to listen to anybody. So perhaps not being in an HOA is a net positive. So we see that the HOAs do not keep prices or values of the homes higher. And 31% of people feel that HOAs have too much freaking power. Take a look at this. At Deborah Blue's Way County home, the color of her shutters had her facing steep fines with her homeowners association. They decided to fine me $25 a day. Deborah paid close to two grand in fines and took down her plum shutters. Which was immediately met with a response that now they were going to fine me in violation of taking the shutters off the house and start fining me again. Now, if you think that was insane, you have to see what happened to this homeowner. And now to another exclusive, a Western Hills homeowner has been put on notice and told to park his $100,000 pickup out of sight or face fines. That homeowner claims the rules are outdated and ridiculous. And it's funny how you listen to the end of this clip, you hear the HOA president saying that if the guy bought the house and read his covenants and restrictions, bought the house 27 years ago. If he had read it, he would have understood that he could not have bought that car and would not have ever purchased it. The neighborhood attraction. Some are taking pictures of it. They said, beautiful vehicle, and they, can I see it? That's the only comments I've got. Less than two weeks after taking delivery, Gordon gets this notice from property management. You see, the truck cannot be parked in his driveway overnight. What a joke. So what can we do about these crazy HOAs? Like I said before, very hard to overturn any of the rules that are written in the covenants and restrictions. There are only seven states that have offices that can take complaints or will take complaints about HOAs. However, there's nothing that these offices can do. They're underfunded and essentially all they can do is take the complaint. They can't do anything with the complaint, but they can take the complaint. Do you have my reservation? Yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. <laughs> That's why you have the reservation. <laughs> Government officials have their hands tied as to what they can do with HOAs. There are three states that are trying to pass rules, laws, and regulations. Florida, Texas, and North Carolina. Changes could be coming to your HOA, and that could impact a lot of people. And they're proposing these laws to give the people in the HOAs more power. However, the management companies are also fighting back because they're trying to protect their $38 billion 
industry. Now it looks like the only course of action that anybody in an HOA who's having a problem can do is actually go to court. You can't go to small claims court, you've got to bring up a lawsuit. Now there have been people that have been successful in fighting their HOAs, but just know that you have to fight. Sometimes getting together with other people in your neighborhood and kicking out the board your sons of bitches and kicking out the HOA and starting with a new HOA may help resolve it but it's not easy so if you're thinking of purchasing a home in an HOA in a homeowners association let the buyer beware know what you're getting yourself into because it could be a problem could be beneficial too. We'll do a video about the possible benefits of an HOA, but being in an HOA does come with its headaches. Now, if you thought this video was interesting, please take a look at these other ones over here. They may interest you as well. My name is Eli Maggots. Thank you so much for watching. Until we see each other again next time.